spectrometry. Um, very, very quick. Hopefully this will be under, I don't know, I have to go to a meeting in about four minutes, so hopefully under three minutes. Basically, mass spec is this machine. What it does is um, it works on making something charged and then it fires it down a tube, bends it and detects it. It bends it based on a magnetic field with, which um, interacts with the charge on the ion and therefore deflects it so it bends around the tube. Hopefully you've listened to the podcast already and had a look at the notes. Um, it's, I'm pretty happy with that podcast actually, so if you haven't, go to um, the website, which you can see in the link to on this, download it and listen to it, um, and that explains a bit about how it works. And um, Yeah, then we can go into this and in less in more detail onto the yeah, actual spectrums and I can point to the spectrums rather than you have to listen to me. So listen to that first, do this second. Um, this part here is the ionization chamber, so where the thing gets ionized, you get your sample going in here and what happens is you bombard it with electrons. So your electrons hit it and it makes it, pos makes it charged. So you have a molecule, M, you add electrons to it here, what happens it goes to being M positive plus two electrons, meaning that an electron gets knocked out of the actual molecule and it ends up being a charged molecule. This charged molecule then comes fired down the chamber. In this chamber you have a magnetic field which interacts with the positive charge which causes it to deflect and you get the deflection moving it down and you get this detection happening here. Um, and yeah, so you, you change the magnetic field, you get a different um, ion there. The mass also depends, like how heavy it is, depends on changes the um, amount of deflection you get. So the heavier the molecule, the um, more, the less bent it will be, and therefore you can change the magnetic field and get the stuff happening there. Listen to the podcast, it goes through it quite well there. Anyway, um, the thing is, with this, you get um, your molecule that's ionized is not stable, so therefore it fragments, and this is what I want to talk about here. So you have a, say we have CH3, CH2, CH3, we have propane. This is propane. When it becomes charged, we can go, all right, I'll erase this and do it properly. So we have CH3. 3CH2, CH3, add an electron to that, you get the whole thing being charged, CH2, CH3, CH3, positive, stupid machine, where they go, positive, plus two electrons, where the thing has become charged here. Um, this charged molecule is unstable, so therefore it can fragment, and bits of it can break off. So you might have a bit that breaks off, such as CH3, CH2, CH3, positive. Because it's unstable, it will break apart, and you'll get fragments of this breaking off. The fragments that can break off are what chunks of this molecule. So you might have a CH3, CH2 molecule that breaks off, which is charged. The other part will be a CH3, which will be a radical, which means it'll have an unpaired electron. We do that by saying we have a dot there. One will have a charge, one will have a dot. This is the formation of a fragment of an ion. So if you, um, for instance, have to tell me that an ion has been fragmented, you can write the equation like this, where we have the charged part going to another charged plus a radical with a dot. This is a three, by the way. Moving on, um, here's where we actually look at the spectrum and see what we can see. Um, what we can see in this um, spectrum is a whole bunch of peaks. These peaks relate to the uh, mass of each ion or fragment. We have a peak here at 59. This is known as the parent molecular peak um, or the parent molecule peak or the parent molecular ion peak. Basically, it's the peak that's formed because of our actual ion, of our full molecule. The rest of these guys are fragments of this full molecule. Now, the way that we can interpret this is we might get a question saying that this molecule contains 
carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. We need to work out what the molecular formula, or sorry, the empirical formula is for, uh, molecular formula it would be, could be for this combination. What we do is put together a whole bunch of different um, combinations of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen until you get one which adds up to 59 and makes sense. So, we do that, we look at it and go, ooh, what could it be? Um, four carbons, four carbons gives us 48, all right, because each carbon's 12. Uh, what, how, what else do we need to get to that? We've got an oxygen, so one oxygen. I'm just guessing here, just thinking of numbers which add up to be about that. One oxygen gives us too much, so it can't be that. Let's go back to and do three carbons. Let's, that might be a bit better. Three carbons gives us 36. One oxygen gives us 16, so put those together we get 52. How many hydrogens do we need to make up that? We need seven hydrogens, seven hydrogens. So I'm guessing it's going to be C3H7O. Basically by playing around with our different molar masses of the compound, of the elements we have, until we get something which makes sense to add up to this. Start off with your carbon, basically, because you're going to have a certain amount of carbon. Then go to add one oxygen onto it, or two or three, and you get something that makes sense to what it could be. That's using your parent molecular ion um, mass. These guys are fragmentations of this molecule. So to work out what these could be is you break this up into what these might be. So what we have is one at 27. Let's think about what could be 27. Two carbons gives us 24. How many oxygens do we need to make 27? We need 3, so what it could be is a C2H3 fragment could come off it. Alright, so this fragment here could be this, um, have this structure. Now this has to be positive because only positive things make um, lines on our mass spectrum. Because if it's not positive, it won't fly up, it won't get deflected, therefore you won't get a line happening here. Move it down, what you might get asked for is draw or write a, um, an equation for the formation of this fragment. So for that, what you need to look at is what our parent um, molecular ion is, which is C3H7O, positive, because it has to be an ion. To fragment to give there, this, you must have C3H, sorry, C2H3, because that's what it was, C2H3, positive, because that's what this is. Our other part to it is whatever's left over. So we have a CH3OH, um, which might be, and that will be a radical. This is just an idea of what it could be. It's not necessarily what it is. It's just what it could be. And it, it makes sense with what it could be as well. So you think about what, what makes sense for this molecule. Um, and that kind of makes sense to me. Remember, this is our parent molecular ion, which is from the furthest along peak here. This is our fragment peak, which we have here. This is what's what it is ever left over after you take away this from this. Hopefully that makes sense to you. I'm going through it relatively quickly because I need to be somewhere. All right. The other thing is the highest peak this guy here is your highest peak. This highest peak is called the base peak. This is by the most abundant ion you have there. It's not necessarily the most abundant is your actual parent one, but the highest one is your abundant, most abundant peak. Um, normally this is a percentage abundance, so normally it should be 100. This time I'm not sure what they're doing with their abundance here, but um, normally this is given the value of 100. Everything else is relative to the 100 there. Next one, we have our, um, what's it called? Our spectrum here. This is called your parental molecular ion or parent molecular ion. This is from our 
molecule becoming positive. That's the formula for the ion that made that. Now be careful and remember that the formula for the ion must have a positive charge next to it. All right? It's not just the formula here. The formula for the ion must have the positive charge. Very important, otherwise you'll lose marks. Um, the fragments, this fragment here, um, what adds up to 29? Well, two carbons is 24. How many hydrogens do you need? You need five, so it must be five hydrogens, so therefore it must be a C2H5. All right, and positive because it's a fragment. And to make this little line here, it has to have a positive there. All right, this is actually 10 minutes long, so I'm going to stop it here. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. And, um, yeah, I might make another one. I might not. But I think this explains it pretty basically. Main thing is look at your mass and play around with your elements until something makes sense and it has a charge with it. And to write your um, fragmentation um, equation, remember you have a charge parental ion, then you have two fragments, one's charged, one's not.